Welcome back from the welcome back from the shop. Welcome back to the shop. All right. It has been a very good long time. I have taken like two weeks or so off. Um, but you guys aren't missing anything because I have filmed a ton of footage. So we're ready to make the fretboard the final dimension. So I've made this template and I apologize for not recording it. You've seen me make templates before. I figured why not, but I feel dirty so I won't do that anymore. Um, made a template. This template is a fretboard size all the way around. The length is longer than probably any fretboard I'll make. This length is you know, 20 inches long, 20 and a half inches long. So I'm not at any risk of being shorter than most of the fretboards I'm ever going to build. And the reason I do that is the end that is the narrow end, the narrow end here is my nut end. That's where the very end of the fretboard will be put. Um, and this is a routing template, so it's, it's a flush trimming template. So I can take this fretboard and place it on the, you'll see this in a minute, but place it on here with the nut zero up flush against this end and no matter how long the fretboard is going to end up being I can get these side edges cut flush so that they're just exactly the right size they're actually going to be 20 or so thou bigger so that leaves me a little bit of you know sanding cleanup scraping trimming final 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 for real final fitting at the very end um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this on this fret on this template for for routing um, and then at the very end, I can decide what the very length, the final length is. So I really, I'm going to start with getting the nut end done because right now there's some extra here on the nut side. I'm going to get that cut flush with this slot. And then I'll put that on the template, get the side done, and then I can work on the end. So basically we're getting the, temp the fretboard to its final, pretty much the final dimensions. Um, in final shape. So first thing I need to do to get that done is there's a center line on this template and I need to transfer the center line here because right now they're on the oversized ends and I'm going to be cutting that off so I want to just put a I'm just going to put a nice visible line down the center by I've got these little nicks here uh, little knife marks at the current center point and I'm just going to make a nice solid white pencil line down the very center. I'm going to be very careful get, about getting this right on. There, there. And that looks not quite. I'll come down just a tiny bit. Hold on. I need to get an eraser. I don't want that one. So I'm trying to account for the radius of the pencil lead that got sharp. It's pretty sharp, but it's not a perfect point because it'd be very brittle if it were. There we go. That is beautiful. Okay. There we go. And now we have a nice clear line to preserve my center point. Um, we're going to head over to the vise and I'm going to cut off this end so I have a f perfectly flush nut end to zero things and then we'll come back and get it ta taped to the to the template here. See, I think the next time I do this, I may, I'm not so sure I will cut to final full taper, but I will cut off at the zero point because this doesn't actually have a, the fret, th in this case, if I were doing a Strat or a Tele, there would be a nut slot in the, most of the other ones, especially with an angled back headstock, there is no fret slot, it, or a nut slot. There's a, just the end, the fretboard just stops. And next time I'll just cut that off so that that is the end. Um, I did it out of paranoia for dimension, but I'm not so sure it really matters all that much. Um, so, anywho, to cut that off now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off with extra overhang, because the one thing I cannot do is move that. That end that's already there is my zero. I cannot take any wood off of what's been cut there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it shy of that. I'm going to leave a little extra. And then very carefully with um, either the belt sander or some files, I'll bring that, you know, that extra chunk of the, which will be a rabbit left behind. I'll bring that, I'll bring that flush very carefully and very slowly so I take no wood across what's already been cut. So we're just at the bandsaw. I've got my little zero clearance insert and I'm just going to take a quick little cut. I'm going 
slow because it's, e it's easier to stop a mistake if you're doing it slowly. And because there's no rush, it's literally like an inch and a quarter cut. Okay, so let me show you how this turns. See how we got that little step there, there's a little ledge. Now I'm going to go to the sander and try to get some of that ledge off without taking any of this remaining stuff. And so the reason this is a little tricky is because this board is tapered, so I can't just, I can't use a miter gauge or something and just hold it so, or a square because it's not a square cut. Um, but I'm just going to, there's like, I think this is 100 grit on here, so it, it will not move fast, but it won't go slowly either. It will take some time. I'm just going to give myself some standing room here. But I'm just pushing against it with my left hand. I'm in absolutely no hurry. And that's why I don't have it powered on. And I'm just gingerly taking the slightest bit. Okay, we're getting close on that side. At a time. I don't want to move quick. I am in no rush here. I will gladly sneak up on this. And I'm watching where the contact points are on the sandpaper, and I'm I'm twil tilting my hand. I'm adjusting pressure. I might be pushing harder on this side to try to get it to cut more there versus the other side if it's getting close to that side. And I am literally, this is the epitome of sneaking up. Um, yeah, there's, it's really close on this side right now. I can still see the seam, so I'm just going to switch spots here because some of this... Some areas of this belt are rougher than the others, and they'll move a little quicker. There's a couple of spots where I can afford to go a little faster. Um, yeah, this side's... And I'm just pushing against it, slowly taking off the extra. Yeah, we're getting close here. So I'm going to come back over here. And I'm watching that, those lines to see where the seam goes away. And I may switch over to a file here in just a second, because we are getting close, but it's also not straight. It's kind of rounding. So I may see what I can do out past the belt a bit. No, I think we're going to switch around. Now we're going to change our tooling. All right. So instead of the drum sander, the belt sander at this point, I have decided on a block of 220 grit sandpaper set on a pretty square uh, surface here. Clamp the fretboard down to the bench. <clears throat> and I'm just going to very slowly work my way to final size here, to final placement here. And I'm doing as best I can to avoid rounding this at all costs. It is easy to do here, so I'm literally taking just a couple of passes and checking, making sure. Yeah, I'm definitely rounding that edge over, but so we're just taking our time, making sure we give it all of our all of the attention necessary to make sure I do not overshoot. That is the critical thing. In fact, had I done this the right way, or the way I should have done it, I think, this would not be an, a step. This is just me recovering, recu recovering. I'm working with the reality I've set myself up for by not cutting this end to begin with, um, with the CNC. This should have been done. I mean, I could probably chisel that maybe i don't know but i'm just kind of trying to go until i can't tell that there's a, a step there anymore and i'm literally just taking take a pass check it feel i'm looking feeling the little ledge with my thumbnail and it's it's gradually going away and it's going slowly which is way better than any risk of uh Overshooting. I'm trying not to overshoot as best I can. Thankfully, the area that I am rounding over down here is going to get cut off, so 
it's a low-ish problem and it's a matter of where I'm applying my pressure so I'm just I'm really pressing down to make sure it stays square and I'm pressing this way to sort of push against it but I'm trying to stay low while I do it but as my fingers get past the edge of the fretboard it's it's taking a turn okay so we're at zero there and at zero there so we're good there now what I'm gonna do is get it onto this here template all right, so let's get this taped down. I think what I'll do is, yeah, we'll just do, God, we don't need anywhere near that much tape. I'm gonna do strips. I'm just gonna get a couple of strips because this doesn't, this just needs to be fixed in place. It does not need to be like completely um, adhered to it. It just needs to stay there. It doesn't. It is not a high impact, high stress fastening. It just needs to stay put. So we'll just do that with a couple of pieces. Save a little tape, save a little trouble getting it back off this guy. It's funny, I can do it in one pass sometimes. Sometimes it takes it. Okay. So there's that. We'll just, so the real trick is just getting it on there centered. And that'll just be a case of taking my time. Okay, so now I'm going to focus myself a bit here. Because I need to make sure it stays flat against the, the nut. So I'm going to, I am going to hold that down with a little something to make life a bit easier there. Now I have sort of a backstop I can hit against. So we're just going to eyeball that end, which looks good right there, actually. And there. I think that looks OK. Just carefully, yeah, that's definitely flush. Okay, like that. Do about there. There we go. We might have to reposition here. Well, that's probably okay. I believe I can get centered. Yeah, it's centered pretty good. Flush, it feels pretty flush. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Get a little more flush there. Yeah, that feels all right. Yeah, that feels great. And centered here, yep, that looks really centered there. Good, 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 good. Yep, all right, so we're centered and we're now fastened to this. I can take it over to, oh, evade the router table here. And uh, we can flush trim this, buddy. That freaks me out, but yeah, we can do that. All right, we are now set up to flush to trim here. And uh, this is a kind of nerve-wracking one for me because it's the fretboard. Um, I'm going to definitely climb cut, and you can see this is sticking past, so I won't be doing the end. The end will get done at the very last possible moment because I don't know how long I want to make it, so it will cover up the blotchy spots on it, the, the messed up spots on the rest, on the rose, on the rosette. That's the word I wanted. Um, okay, so we're just going to get after this. It's going to be a climb cut for both passes because that's going to avoid as much tear out as possible. Um, and so here we go, I guess. I'm a little frightened. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're ready to do this. There's no, uh, there's no chicken and out now. We're just going to get after it. Pretty uneventful, actually, which was good. That's what you want. 
um, and I can see that my brass inlays look pretty even across the edge so it means I kept my center line pretty well Let me just peel it off of here there we go um, so anyways we're pretty well happy um, the pattern did make this a tiny bit oversized so I've got some room to play um, I think we can actually start contemplating getting it onto the neck now so that I'm going to ponder for a moment. So this can now kind of go on here and it will now set the final dimension of the neck width, which is just a tiny bit oversized all along it, which is perfect, exactly what I wanted. And uh, our 14th, our 12th lines up right where we think it will. Um, so that's good. Um, I've got a lot of room for a nut but I think that's fine. <clears throat> and I think um, we might want to figure out, yeah, that would be center right there, wouldn't it? Okay. I think we would like to figure out just exactly, I see that Nick? Looking at center here, I'm trying to figure out where the center of my, uh, this thing went. I think I lost my, Oh, it's right there, right? Yeah, it's right there. Is that right there? Okay, so I can see that line. Yeah, there we go. Yep, there's just a little bit of extra on either side. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah, I think we might be ready to consider attaching this and I'm gonna start by uh, I think I'll do my I think I'll do the little the tiny nail trick here to uh, get these to make sure this gets aligned nicely and doesn't slip around when I go to clamp it when I go to Jed clamp it um, all right so now we're trying to come up with our final length here and to do that I've got a feeler gauge and basically what I want to do is cut this end off parallel with one of the frets. With the last frets, because you can see it's not square at all. So we'll, uh, I've got this feeler gauge that is the width of the fret slot. And that'll go in like so. I've got this little strip that is basically almost perfectly this shorter end length. I want to maximize the length of this. So I'm just going to take this and take my marking knife and try not to slice myself and just come up on it and make a nice mark here all the way across and then I'll cut or sand or scrape or whatever there that is my woof that is eight different lines I messed that up badly so let's try that again here That's better. Okay. So then we can take this little guy out. Be very careful because it is a snug fit. Okay. Now I can run around or do whatever I got to do to get up to that line. Um, and it's not going to kill me too badly if I get the edges to that line and leave a little in the middle and have it sort of round. Um, it's just I want to get that diagonal out of there. So. That was the easiest way I could think of, or the most accurate way I could think of to get it, to get a mark there so I knew where to go. Um, so we're going to take this, I think we'll just do this over at the belt sander real quick and get it. We are in the get ready to put that fretboard on stage. Um, I've got it shaped the way I want. I like it. I like that shape quite a bit, in fact. And uh, we're going to put the thing here, and we're going to line up our zeros and our centers and our 
and do all kinds of stuff. I want to double check one quick, uh, actually, no, we can do it like this. Go, the center line is, let me double check the center of this thing here. Well, these arms don't matter really. But I just want to make sure I've got enough. Yeah, I think we're okay. All right, so we've got our center point on the neck and our center point here all up onto the fret board. It's weird because it looks it so the grain structure makes it look like it's in one place, but in reality it's in another. Yeah, right there. Okay, and the zero line is right there for the nut. We can actually put it right where we want it. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm getting it aligned, and then I'm going to try to hold it there for a sec. Double check that everything goes where I want it to, and it does. Now we're going to take this little scrap I've got and put ourselves. I'm going to put a nail in the fret slot in the first fret. And I think this one we'll put on the lower side here. And I'm going to hold it with this scrap of thin stock so that I don't uh, ding up my wonderfully polished fretboard. And the first thing I'll do is get the nail started. I want to make sure I'm in far enough to uh, not split that fretboard out. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drill those holes. I'm not going to, I am not going to play around. That's a smart thinking. Before I did it, I'm going to drill a couple of holes using the nail so that, that I don't have any hope of, or any chance of splitting out my, uh, my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful flat board. Okay, so what I did is I went and clipped the head off of one of these nails. They're very small nails, which is perfectly fine just need to be able to grab it in a chuck. So a nail can work as its own pilot drill because the heads are usually beveled and that works as a fairly decent as a fairly decent pilot and I'm just going to pick a spot here. And head through. There we go. We're in it. And that is pilot hole 1 in the first fret. And so this is okay, this is bigger. The nail is wider than that slot, but it's not wider than the crown of the fret. So the fret's just gonna cover that up anyway. Um, and now, so we're gonna go in at around, I'd say the 12th is fine. And I'm gonna come in a little ways, half an inch. And we'll do the same thing here, and we're through. Okay. And that way, I have two locating holes now. I'm gonna really quickly, where is that there? I'm gonna really quickly just touch up the bottoms of these holes where these holes popped out because they did raise things a little bit and that'll make everything sit flat again. And now I've got two little pilot holes for these nails, which will help me, oh, will help me start these nails and prevent any chance of splitting. I've also got them in far enough that there's some meat in the neck to receive it. I don't know that I want to go fully depth, too full depth here. Let's have a peek. No, we're definitely not going to go all the way deep because I also want to be able to pull these little buggers out. We need to go deeper than the quarter inch that the thickness of the fretboard is. Okay, so there, and then we line up our hole. And then I'm just going to get the nail started now. And that gets us right on it. That is perfect. Okay. I'm actually going to go a little harder, a little further, because I want that pike, I want that thing to stick out. It'll help me hold my position a little bit. Okay. Now we can set this in. We're good. Double check our location, align our center. Right. There. I think we want to come a little more this way. Good. And I'm holding on to things because I don't want anything to shift and I'm about to go pound it on this thing. So that's the other reason I left the nail sticking out just a tiny bit is 
it'll give it a little bit of grab. And if we don't get this right on our first go, we have to pull the nail out and then drill a new hole. Go at it another way. And this little strip is protecting my fretboard in case I have a miss on the hammer. Okay, so now we're in a quarter inch or so. I'm gonna spread this. No, I'm not gonna spread this. I'm just gonna drag it out of there. Okay. So that is now holding the fretboard onto the neck. That is a big step, in fact. Exactly where I want it. Now I can come down here to the 12th, do the same thing, and get my centers. I'm going to take a look here. That does look good there. I'm just checking my center line down here to make sure that it lines up there. And it's not tight, but it also isn't super loose right now, so it's not really trying to move around all that much. Now we'll put this one in. Put our little protector on here because that's a great thing. Okay. Now, I, f I have a feel for where center is on this. There we go. I'm going to get it started. We're into the mahogany now, it's not moving. Double check that I've got a little bit of meat all the way around. I do, I do. Pull the protector off, check our center here. That looks pretty good, center's right where I want it. Okay, that tells me that I now have a reliably repeatable positioning for the, for the neck, or for the fretboard. So then I can pull the nails out still using my little protector here um, just enough to get it released from the fret or from the neck again okay we're free of the neck on that side we'll come over here now we're ready to glue the fretboard onto the neck just pulling it just enough to make sure it comes free there we go okay we are ready to put this dang fretboard on right now that is it's positioned that's perfect right where we want to be. Um, it's time to bring out the glue, I think. I'm going to make sure I think through this one last time because if there's anything else I can do before the fretboard goes on, I should do it now. This is my last chance to do anything before it goes on. I don't think I do. i got to make sure I keep the truss rod in there. I think we're ready to glue this thing. I'm going to go grab some glue and a few clamps and freak out a little bit for a second. And then we're going to do this. All right, fretboard's going on soon. Okay, so we're getting ready to glue the fretboard on. We're very near it. The only thing I want to do first is take a little bit of um, silicone caulk. And uh, I want to make sure the fretboard doesn't rattle around. So what I'm going to do is put a little caulking down inside the, the groove in a few places to uh, give, the, give it a bit of cushion. So that'll help, and then down here I want to make sure that things don't rattle. So I'm going to lay down a small bed of caulk down here and along the side walls. This is, um, this is door and window stuff, so it stays flexible, so it'll hold it without a bunch of rattle. So, all right, that should take care of that. There we go, it does, and then we'll set that in. And that could use a bit more, actually, so let's see if we can lift. Yeah, that needs a little more. Not a ton, just a little. Just a little. Try to get enough on the walls there to really do a job of it. There we go. It squeezed out around it. That's what I was after. And that one's in as well. Shove it forward as hard as we can there. And we'll scrape some excess out of the way here. Always good to have a little excess there, I think. And that should, we'll use, I guess this will work fine. And that should then keep the fretboard, or the truss rod from buzzing too badly, hopefully. Or at all, hopefully. <clears throat> All right, I'm, uh, 
I'm not going to get out of doing this now. It's time to do the... It's time to glue this bugger in. So the first thing I do for that is I want to put a little tape over because I don't want the glue to get into the truss rod slot. I just want the silicone there to hold it. I don't want a bunch... I don't want a bunch of other crud down in there if and if and I can help it now some guys tape this slot off and leave the tape there and other guys take the tape off I prefer to take the tape off because otherwise you are trying to pinch a pile of wood in so that it I mean it's there's a lump in the center that just doesn't it does not add up for me, so I won't do it that way. Um, I need a straight edge. I guess that one will do. And we'll just put a straight edge on here to... I'm going to cut the excess out of the way here. Let's see if I can get that positioned a little better. There we go. And I just want to make sure we... Stay there and stay there. Okay. Nope. It wants to uh, it wants to go this way. So, what I'll do then instead is I will make a couple of marks where I want to see, and then I can come to this side. That'll stay put a little bit better, hopefully. It was trying to lean too much weight over the edge there, and it was wanting to roll on me. So. This method will work just fine. Now we can take our knife. And this is not a precision operation. This is just, I'm masking off the fret, the truss rod so that when I do put the glue on, the mask will keep the glue out of the fretboard or the truss rod slot. And it's wide enough to allow a little bit of the squeeze out as well. So, okay. No more stalling. It's time to get this glue going. So, here we go. We're going on a fretboard right this second. Like it or not, it's happening. So I'm using yellow glue. I know a lot of guys want to use hide glue, and I realize that's a traditional thing. I have heard both sides of it that the hide glue is so it's reversible and gives you a little tack. <clears throat> it doesn't hold quite as strongly, but it doesn't need to. Um, the yellow glue fans um, believe also that it's just as easy to remove a yellow glued fretboard as it is a hide glued fretboard takes a little extra heat but that's not a huge thing so I have decided because hide glue like real hide glue not liquid hide glue but real hide glue I here's the reasoning <laughs> I'm a chicken shit I have not taken the time yet or I will one day to learn how to work with hide glue I just haven't that's so 90% of this is comfort zone. I have yet to use it in, a w in any way. I've never actually used it. I have some. I have a little heating pot that I could use to melt it and, and all that. But I just I don't have comfort with it yet, and I'm not going to use it on this guitar as an experiment. I'm going to do, you know, testing or whatever. I'm going to do what I'm comfortable for this. So, all right, the glue's on. Time to peel the strip back. And there we go. And that's our nice little safe zone for the truss rod slot. Okay. I need to get some acetone really quick and wipe the back of this fretboard off so that it does not get the oils in the way. And I have to find my acetone. Ah, it's buried. Lovely. I'm not in a panic, I promise. I'm totally prepared. I'm totally prepared for this. I was totally all ready to go here. Yes, I was. That's the truth. That's the truth right there. I was totally... Oh, man. Can't open the jar. 
No panic. We're fine. We got plenty of time. Plenty of time. Okay, let's scrub this down real nice. All right. No in no rosewood oils. Okay. There we go. Like so and like so. We're going to we're going to protect our surface. I'm going to pound that one in. Protect our surface. Pound that one in. Okay, that's good. Let's get some clamps on this thing now. Real fast. So I checked this earlier and this particular fretboard happens to hold up pretty well all on its own to uh, the curve of the of the radius and the neck. So it's going to go down flat no matter what I do here. I'm not too concerned at all about it. I don't. I, there's a lot of guys use a clamping call and I probably should use a clamping call. In fact, we're going to real quick. I'm going to put a little neoprene, not, a, not necessarily a call, but a, a strip of the neoprene here. We'll just do it like this. Yeah, we'll just do it like this. I'm starting to panic because I did goof and I should have had my clamp out and ready, but I did not. Hold on. Let's go get a pair of scissors. Take it easy here, Beamer. You're all right. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. I just, it's too unwieldy to be a three foot long freaking piece, so. set this right here and then we can put our clamp actually put the clamp up and we'll put the clamp here for the moment get that out of the way there we go same level of holding as it had a second ago there put one over him get out of the way down here, so that is good. I'm gonna grab a couple more clamps, get them in the middle stuff. Yeah, this isn't gonna be a big problem. The whole fretboard is seating flatly anyhow. And if I need to, I'll refrat I'll reflatten it if I have to, but I am absolutely not concerned here. Okay, this one I'll do right here. Get a hold of that. This is the only one that needs a little warpy. Yeah, we're gonna go on the dovetail, I guess. Come down here. There we go. That one's holding good. We're up. I want to get up off of the. I want to get something on this zero point as well. So I've got a few clamps in. I'm just going to grab some more here. And again, remember the back is oversized, so I'm not at all worried about the back of the neck because it's bigger than it needs to be anyhow. Get a good bit of clamp on that and on that. And then I'll grab a couple more clamps here. Get some stuff out of the way. I did not fully prepare for clamping, but we're not bad. We're okay. I am not concerned. It's going to be fine. We got a little bit of squeeze out there, but that's all right. Um, I'm going to try to get something on the volute area here. Probably just a quick grip. We can just put that there and I think I can just space out something maybe or we'll just go after yeah that's fine yeah that's good we're getting a little squeeze out at the zero and I want to see this side real fast how are we doing down oh yeah we got good plenty plenty of contact over there okay that's it fretboards on boys and girls that's a big step I'm pretty tight we're good 
I'm not too worried. We should be fine. I keep saying I'm not too worried. What that really means is I'm kind of worried. No, it's fine. All right, fretboard glued on. We'll let that dry, and then we'll come back. 